Hello, in this video we're talking about short selling and I, I hope you find this idea fascinating because typically the way we think about stocks, so here's the typical maybe thought pattern, typical thoughts on stocks. If you imagine there's some time versus money graph, time versus the amount. You imagine you buy the stock at some value, you buy it for cheap, and then over time it goes up, and then when the price is high enough, you sell it, and that difference between what you bought it for and what you sold it for is your profit. So maybe you buy it for $10, and you sell it for, let's say that looks like $10, $20, So that means you make $20 in profit right away, right? That's your capital gain. And that's per share, and this can multiply out for, for many shares. So that's the typical perspective, is that you want the value of your stock to go up. But what if there is a way to make money when the stock goes down? And that, in fact, is what short selling is really all about. It's a way to make money when the value of stock goes down. Here's how it works. So I'm going to just draw a little time graph. Here's time. Here's the value. So you buy the stock, usually, excuse me. Here you borrow the stock. You borrow it from someone else. And let's say you borrow it at, I don't know, $10. That's what it's worth right now. And you're borrowing it. You have to give it back to them. You can't not return it. You have to return it. And let's say over the first week, your plan is to sell it right here. Maybe you sell at $11. Right, you bought you borrow at eleven, you sell it at you borrow at ten, you sell it at eleven. Okay, but then the price falls low. Let's say it gets all the way down here, and you're really excited. The price has fallen, and what you do is then you buy it back. And let's say you buy it. Let's say it's a dollar. So you borrowed it at ten, you sold it at eleven, and then you buy it back at a dollar. What would this essentially mean? Well, this would mean that your income, you sold it for $11. That's your income, right? You didn't have to buy the stock in the first place. You had to borrow it. But then you bought it back for a dollar. So minus your cost. And that means that your essentially income minus your cost or your revenue minus your expenses is your profit. Right, so you, in this case, you're making ten dollars. Now, imagine if you scale it up by a thousand shares. You borrow a thousand shares. You sold them all at eleven dollars, and then bought them back at a dollar. Right, eleven minus one is ten, times a thousand. That makes you means you made ten thousand dollars in profit. And that's all because the price fell. You actually want the price to fall because. Here, it doesn't even matter if you sell it so much at 11 or if you sold it for what you borrowed it for or even if you sold it down here for like $9, let's say, $9 over here or something. As long as you're able to buy it back at a cheaper rate, then you return to the person who had it in the beginning. But that means your expenses will be lower than you're selling. As long as that is true, you're going to be making money. They found a way to make money on the falling value of stock. And that's really fascinating. And... You might think that, um, you know, why, why would you do this? Well, it, you would do this if you think that the value of the stock is going to fall at some point a, in which you're borrowing it. If you think that's going to happen, then this could really work out in your favor. You're going to owe them, uh, them the person you borrowed the stock from, a commission. So it's also worth it for that person, and, and they would loan their stock out if they believe, okay, maybe it'll fall, but I believe that eventually it'll go back up, right? In the future, it'll go back up. So if you own the stock, what you've essentially done is loan to someone else, let them trade and make money off of it. You make a commission, they pay you. And then sure, you get back your stock and it's worth only a dollar. But maybe you think, I'll just wait it out. And then you'll wait for it to go back up. So it's fallen and then risen back to, let's say $10 up here. Now, if you didn't loan the stock out, you would have made nothing. But because you lent it out to someone, they made some money off of the dip. You got a commission, so you made a profit as well. Ordinarily, just holding on to the stock, though, it would have gone down and back up, and you would have broke even. So they make money as well. 
So it's kind of an interesting scenario. And what we can do is look at a little bit more complicated of a situation so that you can make sense of it. So let's say you borrow 100 shares, 100 shares of some stock from a corporation, XYZ Corp. And notice we don't even mention how much the cost of that share is. It's really irrelevant, right? Because um, you're not buying it, you're just borrowing it. But then you sell it at, let's say, $28 per share. So you sell it at a high. And that's where you pay a $100 commission. So that's where the, the person loaning you the stock makes the money right away. You pay a $100 commission to make that trade. And then you wait. Let's say you're in your agreement. You wait two weeks and the price falls to $22. And you think that's the low. The price falls to $22 a share. And you're excited the price has fallen and you buy 100 shares back. And you return it to the owner. You return it, I'll just say return it, and pay another $100 commission. Every time you trade it, you have to pay $100 you pay a hundred dollar commission. Now, when we analyze this at first glance, it might not seem like anything interesting has happened. But if we analyze what's going on, and look at the person's income here, well, what have you done? You've sold um, the, sh the, the stock at $28 per share times a hundred, and you lost a hundred dollars as a commission. Then your costs, what are your costs here? Well you have to buy back the stock at $22 per share, 100 shares, and there's a $100 commission. Now, if you work all of this out, you've essentially made $400. Not bad. And it's $400 out of the $2,300 in cost that are associated with this. It's the, this part right here, $22 times 100 plus 100. And it's a 17.4% return on investment, which is really good. So you're actually making money. And, and again and again and again, the more this price falls, the, the higher your return on investment will be because you're essentially buying back the stock for a cheaper rate. All right, I hope that helped.